Hello there, I'm Jake Archibald, and I've been trying to rework how session history is spec'd. Uh, the current spec is missing lots of stuff, gets stuff wrong, and for some reason I agree to try and fix that. First up, I want to talk about the concept, as in how I'd like developers to be able to think of session history. Uh, later on in the video, I'll talk about how we actually spec that. But first, here's the concept. Right now, the spec talks about joint session history as this kind of flat list. Uh, I'd like to drop that concept and instead have a timeline of history steps. So here's a history entry for a top level page. Uh, the outer dark bit represents the document and the inner bit is the history entry and its URL. We're going to call this step zero. And if a user clicks a link, that might navigate to a new document and entry, which we'll call step one. All right, let's make things a bit more tricky. Let's add a couple of iframes to the page, each with their own documents and history entries. The current spec has trouble here because a flat list can't express that these history entries all exist at the same step. Let's go ahead and navigate that first iframe. That creates step two in our timeline, and now we'll navigate the second iframe, which creates step three. And then we'll navigate the top page, but we're just going to navigate it to a different hash. This is different because it creates a new history entry, but continues to use the same document. I like thinking of session history as a timeline because it makes it easy to answer questions like, if we're on step four, which of the history entries should be active? And to answer that, we look at each navigatable thing, so that's the top level and all of the iframes, and we pick the history entry that starts at step four or the one that intersects with step four. And there we go. If we wanted to switch to step two, the process is the same. Going from step zero to say step three might mean reloading the top page and relinking history items back to these newly created iframes. Browsers already do this, uh, although they all do it differently and it isn't in the spec. Uh, I do have a plan for specking how this packing and unpacking happens, but I'm gonna tackle that in like a, a second phase. So for the rest of this video, let's pretend it happens perfectly by some sort of magic. Okay, here's another case that isn't handled all that well by the current spec. Here we've navigated from one document to another and navigated within the document twice. But what if some JavaScript adds an iframe at this point? Where does it go? It doesn't create a new entry in the joint history like the current spec suggests. It doesn't create a new entry in the current step either. It actually creates an entry in the same step that the parent document was created. Now, if we navigate the iframe but later want to go back to step two, we can say, sure, here are the history entries to use. This works even though the iframe didn't really exist in step two. This is important because when we traverse through history, we don't add and remove iframes. Here's another tricky case. Here we have a document with an iframe and they've both been navigating around a bit. Let's say we're currently on step four and uh oh, some JavaScript removes the iframe. This results in a series of dead steps, uh, one of which we're currently on. Now Chrome, Safari and Firefox, they all behave differently here, but Here's what I'm proposing. The system writes itself by going back to the previous step that has an associated history entry. This won't cause any reloads because like no current history items change. And from this point, it just ignores the dead steps. So history.length is going to be three. If the user navigates back, it skips over step one. If they navigate forward, again, it skips over step one. To model all of this, I'm introducing a few new terms, uh, the first of which is navigable. That is a thing that can be navigated. So like a tab or an iframe, but also the weird old object tag things that behave like iframes, and also some new things like pre-render and portals. This is currently what the spec calls a browsing context, although with Coop and Coep we can have navigations that change browsing context. It has history entries, one of which is current, uh, as in the one that's being displayed. The next term is top level navigable. Uh, this is the topmost navigable, which is a browser window or a browser tab. In the spec, this is currently a top level browsing context, but again, that needs to change because of Coop and Coep. It's the thing that knows the current step of the history timeline, and it's responsible for telling navigables which of their history entries is the current history entry. And finally, session. As the user clicks links, taking them from one page to another, uh, one origin to another even, we consider this part of the same session. However, if the user navigates using a method outside the page, like clicking a bookmark or entering something manually into the URL bar, this creates a new session. It holds session storage 
and it limits the script's view of the history timeline. So history.length will only see the number of items in the current session, and history.go, history.back, history.forward will not allow you to cross a session boundary. Here's where those things sit in the hierarchy. At the top, we've got a navigable. Uh, at the very, very top is a top level navigable, but you can also have nested navigables like iframes. Uh, the top level navigable lives as long as the browser tab or the browser window. And of course, the browser can have many of these. Navigables span many sessions. Uh, right now, only top level navigables span multiple sessions. Uh, and that changes when the navigation is triggered outside the page. Nested navigables will generally be in the same session as the parent, but pre-render and portals may exist in another session. We haven't decided that yet. A session spans many browsing context groups. Uh, navigating a top-level navigable to a page isolated with Coop and Coep, uh, that's going to add a, a new group uh, associated with the session, assuming it's a, an in-page navigation. Nested navigables in iframes will be associated with the same group as their parent. Uh, portals and pre-render may use a different group. And then we have one browsing context. A group can contain other browsing contexts, but they'll be auxiliary browsing contexts, so they'll live in another top-level navigable. If the navigable is in an iframe, the browsing context technically isn't in a group, um, but its top-level browsing context is, so there's, a, there's an association to the group. We never change the browsing context without also changing the group. Uh, the browsing context can span many documents, most navigations will reuse the browsing context, uh, but it changes if we have to change due to coop and co-op isolation or due to a session change. And a document can span many history entries. As we've already seen, hash navigations, they, they reuse the document, but there's also push state, which does the same. OK, so how do we actually model this? Well, strap in, because this is going to be quite a dense diagram. Uh, we have a top-level navigable, which tracks which history timeline step is active, starts at zero. Uh, History.length, this is a synchronous API, so each navigable needs to know its current value. It also needs to know which of its history entries is the current history entry. Uh, it has a list of history entries, which at first contains one history entry. It's going to have a URL. It's going to have some other stuff, like form state, push state data, Lots of other stuff, which I'm not going to cover. Uh, and it also has a step, which is zero. It has a browsing context, uh, which is going to be a, a top-level browsing context in this case. The browsing context will know which session it's part of. That's how that's linked up. Uh, and it's also going to have a document here. Uh, just to keep things interesting, let's add a couple of iframes. So here we have two nested navigables, each with a single session history entry, uh, each at step zero. Now let's perform a hash navigation uh, of the top level page. That's going to create a new history entry. It has a, a URL, but the browsing context is going to be the same as the previous entry. Uh, and that's the same with the document as well. Because it's a hash navigation, the document doesn't change. Now all that's left is the history entry step. Uh, the current step is zero. Uh, at this point, we'd also need to remove any history entries in any navigable that have a step greater than zero uh, to clear any existing forward history, but there's none in this example. Uh, and then we need to set our new history entry step to the current step plus one. And then the current step number is updated to one, and now we can synchronize each navigable's local state. So they're each showing the correct history entry, and they each have synchronous access to history.length. So that's one navigation complete. Next up, we're going to focus on this iframe. We're going to navigate it to a new page. Uh, so once it's fetched the response and everything, it queues a task with the top level navigable, and that creates a new history entry. It has the usual state. Uh, the browsing context carries over, but the document is new because it's a, it's a page navigation. Now we need to set the step. As before, we look at the current step number, we set it to plus one of that, and we update the current step number to match and update the state in all the navigables. At this point, we have an inactive document that only exists in history, and that's fine because that's how BFCache works, but it could also be discarded and turned into a placeholder. Uh, it's important to use a placeholder here because many session history entries could be using that same document, so they need to be turned into the same placeholder. So in future, when we create the document again, we replace all of the same placeholders with the new document. 
There's one sharp edge that we have to deal with in this model. Uh, it's an old problem and one that browsers currently handle kind of badly and differently. Uh, here's a page with a single history entry. We're going to add an iframe just as before. Uh, and then we're going to navigate to a different hash. As we saw before, this carries over the browsing context and document from the previous entry. But the tricky thing about hash navigations is they appear to be synchronous. Uh, and it's only hash navigations and push state that do this. It's tricky here because we don't know what step this new entry is going to be without crossing processes to the top level navigable. So we kind of cheat a little. We leave the step unknown and we update local state. Uh, so history.length is set to a best guess, like incrementing in this case, and the current history entry is updated to the new entry. So this leaves us in a kind of out of sync situation. We're out of sync with the history timeline. So to fix that, we queue a task with the top level navigable to do the job properly. This means we look at our current step number, increment it, and give our new history entry its real step value. And then we update all navigable states with the correct values. Hopefully this will be a no-op, but it will write things in cases where two iframes navigate at the same time. And that currently leaves browsers with a out of sync uh, local history uh, in, in browsers we have today. And that's all I've got. Um, I guess I should get back to specking this, uh, but I wanted to clear things up for people who didn't, weren't really sure what I was up to at the moment. Uh, but, but that is it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.